Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and welcome to Playload. This is all my video game pickups for the month of February 2021. Uh, we'll just get a couple of things out of the way here, because I showed them already. Uh, but we got a lot of cool stuff this month. Uh, surprisingly a lot of stuff, and one particular pile for a very specific reason, but we'll get to that in a minute. But let's just get some of this stuff out of the way that you've already seen. So the first thing I got this month was GoldenEye Reloaded 007. Now, I've not actually played this in any way, shape, or form, so why did I randomly pick this up? I did a video about the leaked um, GoldenEye remake that never actually officially came out for the Xbox 360, the one that Rare made. Yes, if you missed that video, go check it out. The N64 Classic was upgraded by Rare back in around 2007, 2008, for intended release on the Xbox 360, it was buried, never saw the light of day, and it leaked very recently. So I was just talking about the history of GoldenEye on consoles, and I picked this up just as like a display piece, although in hindsight that was probably a dumb decision, I could have just used a photo, but whatever, that's why I got it. But the actual game, this is not the game I'm talking about in the video, so it might be a little confusing. Just go watch the original video, it's much more interesting. But yeah, so for that reason I have this, but yeah, I, I've not played that. So the other thing that I picked up, uh, that I did a video on as well, was Xenocider. This is a brand new Dreamcast release. Again, did a whole video on it. In that video though, I wasn't sure if I got this sent to me for free or if I had bought it because of the nature of how long this game took to uh, be released. However, the dudes over at Retro Summits who made this clarified that for me. They said, I bought this version. This is the DVD Collector's Edition that has both the game and a bonus music CD. They said, you bought this, we just threw this one in for free as a, an extra copy, just so you could enjoy it. So, now I know, and now you know. So thank you very much to Retro Summits for hooking me up with the extra copy. And I'll put a link in the description to, uh, you know, where you can pick this up if you want to. Like I said, very cool game, probably the most ambitious game made for the Dreamcast since Sega stopped supporting it. Uh, very cool, And uh, but for more information, go watch that video. But either way, thank you to Retro Summits. Moving on to the new stuff. Uh, one of the most bizarre things I got was, it won't seem that bizarre at first, but it was Watch Dogs Legion for the Xbox One, or this is technically the Xbox Series X Enhanced Edition. Um, actually, the reason this is bizarre is not the game itself, it's how I got it, which was uh, Ubisoft themselves. I just got like a random text from a friend of mine at Ubisoft, and it was just like, yo, I'm gonna hook you up with something. And it just showed up, and it was like, oh, cool. <laughs> they had actually already sent me a key for the game, so I already had it digitally. But you guys know me, I'm all about physical. Like, I'll, I'll check out the, the game if it's a key. You'll understand, as a YouTuber, like, I get a lot of, like, random promo emails saying, like, here's a key for this, for that, whatever. I will redeem them, but I don't really consider them part of the collection. I don't really own them. But, you know, sometimes it's like, okay, well, I'll check it out, and if it's cool, then I'll, I'll want to go buy it. This one, I didn't end up buying. Ubisoft's just like, here's a physical, they just mailed it to me. So, thank you very much to the, the, the cool people over at Ubisoft. Now, moving on to a stack of games, though, that I did buy. Um, I apologize in advance because... <laughs> even last month, when I talked about this very briefly, it, it annoyed some people because I've said this so many times. But, I have no choice. I will just kind of do an abridged version. This stack of games is from Best Buy. Um, the reason that that's significant is, I'm sorry again to everybody's face palming who just doesn't want to hear this part, sorry, <laughs> but basically there was a time in Best Buy's history where they created a program called Gamers Club Unlocked and long story short you would get 20% off of all your games if you subscribe to this membership. Um, they have since done away with that program. It does not exist. However, they were still honoring contracts from people that had, you know, gone past the new uh, certification point. Um, and I had a buddy, or I still do, uh, Juan, uh, he uh, actually managed to stack memberships. His wasn't actually set to expire until like the end of 2022. But uh, like in January, Best Buy announced that they were just gonna be severing all existing memberships and they would all cease to function on March 1st. Um, so February 28th, 2021 was the last day in which Best Buy's Gamer Club, uh, Gamers Club Unlocked program existed. So he told me, he was like, go nuts, man. You know, uh, buy some games, pre-order stuff, because the cool thing is it also applied to pre-orders. So go ahead, get whatever you want, and you know, hopefully your wallet doesn't cry too bad. And it did, but at the same time, it's like, I can't pass up on, like, okay, I'll give you a perfect example. So Super Mario uh, 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, which I picked up here. This is originally a Wii U title, but obviously this is the Switch, more upgraded version, plus and it has the Bowser's Fury new content in it. 
Um, Nintendo, famously, their stuff is 60 bucks. You know, Switch games are expensive. Uh, but at Best Buy, because of that, this was only 48 That's a nice chunk of change saved by picking it up now. Um, and in a lot of cases, you know, uh, you'll make that move with Nintendo stuff, the stuff you know is not going to uh, depreciate much. Like, I pre-ordered the uh, Zelda Skyward Sword re-release for that reason. But at the same time, there's the rest of the stuff is like... It was already on sale, and then I used Gamers Club Unlocked because then it, it had to justify bringing it down enough. Not to say these games aren't good, it's just that you can probably get them for that price or cheaper later, but now I have the option of getting them cheap new. So let's go through some of them real quick. Uh, Dreams, which I've, I've not played. I haven't played any of these. But um, this one, you know, I wanted to pick up because I've seen some people making really cool stuff with this. I think somebody actually made, like, a full recreation of, like, um, Ryo Hazuki's house in Shenmue in this. Uh, this is one of those type of games where, I mean, it's literally from the creators of Little Big Planet, and that whole thing was have people make stuff and then you interact in their worlds. Now, that's my understanding of what this is like. So, yeah, it was, I think, $30 to begin with, so then it would have been, like, 24 I think. Um, Last of Us Part 2, which is a game I obviously should have picked up before. I was actually very much on the fence about this. Not because I didn't want the game, um, but because I can almost guarantee this is going to get a PS5 release at some point. Uh, so that's why I was like, eh, you know. But they were Best Buy again, charging 30 bucks, 20% off, $24. So I was like, okay, I'll do it, and then I'll just hope... Whenever I do get a PS5, which I still don't have one, but whenever I do, hopefully whatever upgrades they include in this inevitable re-release, I'm sure they'll do it, um, that hopefully those uh, updates are patched into the PS4 version running on a PS5. The game feels heavier. I'm guessing there's like a second disc or something in there. Again, I, oh yeah, it literally says there's two discs. There you go. I actually appreciate that because they could have just as easily been like, here's one disc plus we do have to download a whole bunch of stuff. I like that. I like when physical games... Even now, with these ridiculous file sizes, they give you more discs to at least give you as much of the physical game as possible. Um, the rest are all Xbox stuff. Again, all on sale. I, I don't remember all. Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. This one I was happy to get because uh, I got Shovel Knight on the Wii U as part of my Wii U set. I think I might have it on PS4, or, I, or maybe I don't. I don't remember. But I always wanted it on Xbox, but they, they didn't do a physical edition of, the, of, of uh, Shovel Knight originally. But this, like, upgraded version with, like, extra characters and content and all that sort of stuff. Um, like, this literally consists of multiple Shovel Knight games. Um, because of that, that re-release, they went ahead and they actually did a physical on Xbox One. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, Made of Scare. I actually watched some gameplay of this just because I, I basically went through Best Buy's, like, what's on sale section. And I was like, if I hadn't heard of it, I looked into it and I was like, you know, what is this? There was a couple that I, I looked interest that looked interesting to me, and then I saw some gameplay and people like reviews, and they're like, "Yeah, the game's like totally broken." I was like, "Okay, cool, we won't bother with that." But this one, people said it was pretty good as a survival horror. So, I actually have a big soft spot for survival horror. I really like that stuff. So, very cool. Uh, Scully. Uh, this was like this. It, uh, I'm sure there were people who will argue with me, but the first thing I thought of when I saw this was it was like Rare makes Knack, you know, Knack the PS4 game. And as if that game was made by Rare, even though this is not made by Rare, it's made by Modus. Um, it just, that was where my brain went to. How accurate that is, I can't really say, but it looked pretty neat. Uh, Tony Hawk's uh, Pro Skater 1 and 2, like the complete remake. Okay, so I have to admit, originally I was just not going to touch this because I remember the trauma that was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. And I was just like, I'm kind of sick of these like remasters done by completely different teams, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, okay, I will at least look into it and see what people are saying about it. And I was kind of surprised when everybody was like, no, man, this is like basically a flawless conversion. Uh, so highly recommended. So I was like, okay, all right, if it's on sale and, you know, all that, so so be it. And the last one I got, which I actually do, um, I do regret. I regretted this like two days after it showed up, which was Samurai Showdown. Um, now, I don't regret it because of the franchise. It's a cool fighting game originally based on Neo Geo stuff. I mean, it is still made by SNK. And it was cheap. It was actually on clearance. And so I was like, okay, cool. That's, that makes sense. And so I get the game. And then, like, the week after that, I'm, like, browsing what's coming up. Because I was looking at pre-orders on Best Buy to see, like, hey, maybe I can pre-order this. Because the cool thing is you can pre-order on Best Buy and they don't charge you until they ship. So if, if a game even remotely interests me, pre-order now while well, Gamers Club Unlocked still works. And then when it's eventually come out, then I can decide if I'm actually going to keep the pre-order or not. But you might as well pre-order it with a guaranteed 20% off. 
So I'm looking through those lists, and I find out they're re-releasing this game as like a definitive edition on Xbox One and Xbox Series X with like all sorts of extra stuff, and I was like... Fine. <laughs> you, you do mess up from time to time, so I'm sure the game's still good, but it just kind of bugs me. It's like, ah, that's why. That's why it was so much cheaper. Um, but there you go. That was my big Best Buy um, purge, uh, if you will. I mean, it wasn't a purge. You know, I purged them of their inventory, perhaps. But uh, yeah, I got a whole bunch of stuff from them. There will be more eventually, um, because like I said, I did pre-order a whole bunch of things, but that's, that's pretty much it. And I just want to say goodbye to Gamers Club Unlocked. Oh, I will miss you. You were the greatest thing ever, but I, I completely get why it doesn't exist anymore. But moving on to happier, newer things. Well, actually, this is not new, but it is at the same time. Um, this is a truly odd situation. So you see two DVD cases there, and I'll show you exactly what they are in a second. So you guys might recall, if you watch the channel regularly, that uh, around last November or December, I did a video on the ill-fated uh, VM Labs Nuon. And if that sentence made no sense to you, you didn't watch the video, which is fine. But what it is, is a console from the sixth generation that attempted to complete with, uh, compete with the Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, original Xbox, and the GameCube. The reason you probably never heard of it, again, if you didn't watch the video, is because nobody heard of it. It was a wildly not successful platform. It flopped completely. Um, and like even I hadn't heard of it when I was doing the 6th gen recap all those years ago. So I made a video once I got one showing it to you guys, talking about the history, all that. And I thought that was going to be the end of the, like, the thing. It was a, a console that basically had eight games ever released. I had two of them. I was pretty much calling it a day at that point. No joke. I make the video and like a couple days later I'm tagged in a tweet from a guy who runs a company called Songbird. I think it's Songbird Productions. And I was like, what is this about? And he was talking about how he's going to re-release a Nuon game. And I thought, okay, that sounds like a little weird, kind of like a fantasy. But then I started seeing articles about this, like, popping up on my phone. Because you know how, like, we live in the algorithm era. You watch a video about dinosaurs and suddenly all of your feed is about dinosaurs everywhere you go. It's just how it is. Um, but... <laughs> so I had made a video about Nuon. I had been talking about the Nuon. So all of a sudden my phone is recommending news about the Nuon. You can imagine there's not a lot of news about the Nuon, but one article kept popping up, which was how this company called Songbird Productions was going to do an official re-release of a game called Iron Soldier 3. And that's exactly what they did. As far as I can tell, what really happened here was that um, the dude who runs Songbird Productions actually acquired the rights, the original assets, everything, to this game. This game came out on the Nuon back in, like, 2000. Um, but not surprisingly, it was not a big hit because nothing on the new one was, but this dude got the rights to it and he was like, you know what? I want to do a an official re-release. So it's not the original version. This is a reprint and he doesn't try to trick you with that. It says 2021 on the back of the box. It says 2021 on the disc. So it's, it is the, up I'm not going to say it's an updated version because nothing about the game has changed, but it is the re-release. Um... So yeah, he, uh, he was cool enough to do this, but first he wanted to test the waters because he's like, how many people are seriously going to want a Nuon game at this point in time? So he put out this, this like, um, basically a subscription sheet where you just go in and fill out like a Google Doc and it just keeps you on a mailing list that says like, okay, when this Nuon, do you want a Nuon game? And if you do, like, just let me know and then I'll, I'll email you. So once he got 100 subscriptions, he's like, all right, fine, I'll go ahead and do the print run. So he made exactly 100 copies of this, not a huge amount. Um, I was surprised to see how many people in my Facebook feed, in particular, bought this. Like, a lot of people in the Nuon group did, even though there's only like 36 people in there. If you're into the Nuon, there is a Facebook group for it. Join it. Um, but it's, it is funny. Like, a bunch of people bought this, but also a bunch of people I know that do not own a Nuon, and probably never will get one. They just wanted this because they wanted to support what a, such a bizarre endeavor to actually officially re-release a, a, you know, a Nuon game. Uh, and there you go. Iron Soldier 3, which is actually a sequel to the Atari uh, Jaguar franchise at Iron Soldier 1 and Iron Soldier 2, which makes sense if you've seen the history of that console. But, so I ordered this, you know, I bought it like anyone else, and that was, I thought would be the end of it, but, you know, I had been promoting it on Facebook, or sorry, Twitter, just because I was so like, guys, <laughs> there's going to be a new one game, and the dude actually reached out to me, he's like, hey man, I shipped your order, I appreciate all your support uh, on Twitter, just letting people know about this, so I actually did you a favor, and I hooked you up with a second copy, I haven't opened this one, this one is sealed, so he just gave me a free extra copy, he's like, you know, at some, you know, you keep it sealed in your collection, give it away, whatever you want to do. And I haven't made that decision yet. You know, it's just, it was a very nice gesture on his part. I wasn't expecting it at all. Also threw in a couple of like, that's a sticker that uh, promotes a Jaguar and the links. Actually, 
uh, you should keep an eye out because he said he's going to send me some stuff that's related to this. So we'll be looking forward to that. And then just a little card that's about like, you know, various platforms and games they've got available. The dude does a lot of, um, uh, Atari indie stuff. Uh, he told me like his objective is to take older games, generally unreleased games, try to acquire the rights to the, the ability to distribute them and then make them like full cartridge or disc based releases and actually get them out there. Now, obviously Iron Soldier 3 was originally released least but but just because it's so like obscure and the fact that he actually could do it he did do it and i just mad mad props i was not expecting to pick up a third new on game ever in my life funny enough still can't play it for two reasons in this case one do not have a controller the new on controllers are insanely rare um and two Iron Soldier 3 was actually recalled back in the day, part of making it why, like part of why it's a harder game to get, because um, there's multiple models of the new one. Uh, one of them, the Toshiba one, which is the one I have, is actually uh, notoriously not really that compatible with this game. Like it'll start, but it, it's known to fail during the game. Uh, because and that's uh, that's why they recalled it because the Toshiba version of the console couldn't run it. I understand they were supposed to fix that bug and ship it back out, but that never happened because of how briefly it existed. So I could probably start up the game and like look at some footage, but I can't play it because I don't have a controller and it inevitably would fail. So either way, it's just cool to have a new on game. Moving on though. Uh, we got some vinyl records. These are video game based vinyl records and I'm getting more and more into these. Uh, you know, I have a record player here at my place um, that uh, Spock Avriel is a, you know, he was a guy who watched my channel for a long series of time and he just got like fed up with the fact that I didn't have a record player even though I had some records so he sent me one and I love listening to them here but my mother's house, my late mother, um, she had like this big, you know, uh, speaker set up and a, a nice record player and all this stuff. And I actually just unearthed her like whole collection. I managed to find it. Um, but anyway, so I, you know, I was like, we sh I should take advantage of this and start listening to some of this stuff. So I've really kind of enjoyed listening to records and that's, you know, I'm not a sound guy, but and I, uh, records were one of those things where always, always, I was always like, man, who cares? Just get the digital or even the, the music CD, who cares? Until I actually started listening to them. And I was like, I take it back. I was totally dead wrong. Records are awesome. They they do sound better. They do sound different because it's you know it's physical. Anyway, that said, I'm glad that there's been kind of a, a resurgence in that energy uh, because it's led to a lot of cool video game scores. I know records are now actually like I think it happened like a few months ago. Records for the first time since like the late '80s outsold the number of CDs produced. How weird of the, the this era we are in. <laughs> but anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about the records. First one I got was um, from Data Discs. Now, Data Discs, I've never worked with Data Discs. I've never really interacted with them outside of a couple of tweets here and there. But uh, so, you know, I bought everything I ever got from them. Um, but I still promote them from time to time because I'm just like, these guys are taking obscure game soundtracks and giving them physical vinyl record releases. That's awesome. This one is not that obscure, and I'm surprised it took this long, but I'm glad it finally happened. Shenmue 2 on vinyl. Oh, yes. Now, if you you know anything about me, kind of a Shenmue fan. Kind of enjoy the franchise. Um, the cool thing about the Shenmue 2 vinyl, though, is that Shenmue 1, uh, the music for it was released a million times over. You know, they, they did it like Sega put out a ton of different music CDs for it back when it originally released in 99 in Japan, 2000 here. Um, and eventually Data Discs themselves did their own, you know, Shenmue 1 record. In fact, it's even mentioned on the back. They have a full list of all the ones they've done. Um, and Shenmue was the second one they ever did. Uh, but Shenmue 2 never got the same kind of treatment. It was kind of, tr you know, the music stuff, all that promo material, they really didn't do any of it. In fact, it wasn't until uh, November 2018 when uh, Sega allowed an official Shenmue 2 music release to happen. Uh, prior to that, you had to, you know, you could only get the game through illegitimate, or the, sorry, the music through illegitimate means by ripping it from the game data and people would do that. But uh, in November 2018, uh, in just Japan, Sega did a Shenmue 1 and 2 re-release set, a collector's edition that included a bonus music CD that had the Shenmue 2 score, or at least some of it. Um, the thing is, the Shenmue games have like hundreds of pieces of music, and each of the records, as well as the CD, only have like 18 tracks on them. So that's, that's what this is. It's like the same exact music that was on that official set. But the cool thing here is not only is it on vinyl, this is the first time that the soundtrack has officially ever been sold just by itself. There is to date no official CD release sold by itself. It was a bonus disc, like I said before. 
So that's awesome. I've already listened to it. It sounds fantastic. My only my only gripe about it would just be like, there's so much more Shenmue music that's not on vinyl. And I mean, look, the upcoming Shenmue 3, which of course is not by Sega, there's a big set of that coming out with like eight or nine discs. It's going to have like 200 pieces of music. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> but either way, still very cool to have this. Now, again, since they did a Shenmue 1 set, they, uh, they released an extra little bonus item you could pick up, and I did. This is an extra little box. It's just, it's the Shenmue box, and it, it holds two records. One is specifically to have the Shenmue 1 set in there and the Shenmue 2 set in there. So, yeah, that'll be very nice, like, one side, and it even says on the side, you know, what they're for. It's selections from Shenmue 1 and 2, then it says it in Japanese, and it says Data 002, which is Shenmue 1, and Data 023, which is Shenmue 2. So that is a very nice little box set. So, very cool. And then they included just an extra little piece of cardboard for, I guess, if you have a... Like, it was obviously as a spacer, just to kind of keep it in place. But the cool thing is, if you have a random extra record around with no case, free case. And then plastic covering. But uh, I got a couple other records. These were not by Data Discs. These were by Limited Run Games, who I'm very happy is getting into uh, vinyl records. These two, also Sega-themed. I'm not sure why... I, 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 I guess I, I, maybe I should look into this, but it's, it's interesting to me that like Sega is like some records go to some companies and some records go to other companies because Data Discs has done a bunch. But these two were done by Limited Run Games and they're really good. Sonic Adventure 1 and Sonic Adventure 2. I'm not really sure why Data Discs didn't have these, but um, I know that these previously got released, I want to say by I Am 8 Bit. Um, I actually saw them, particularly the Sonic Adventure 1 set. Uh, in a store, this is going to sound bizarre, but I actually sounded, I saw it in a store in Paris, France, in the Republique district. I almost bought it, and I'm really glad I didn't, because it was just like, a, as I recall, just a single disc with, you know, some songs. Whereas these limited run sets are actually two discs, and they include a lot of music. There's actually uh, 22 songs on the Sonic Adventure 1 set, and uh, also 22 songs on the Sonic Adventure 2 set. I listen to them as well. They're, it's it's really very good, um, but these are really really nice sets and they fit very well into the collection. So, hey, you know, limited run games doing vinyl records. I gotta respect it. It's awesome. So I yeah, these these are really nice and it's like three Dreamcast iconic games just all getting records at the exact same time. Very very cool, very very cool. And I'd love to play some of this stuff for you, but YouTube's copyright system does not enjoy that type of thing. So. Just know that they're good. <laughs> anyway, moving on. We have a couple of uh, mystery packages here. We got three. Um, the first one, I kind of know what it is. Little story behind this is this thing, little flat package here. This comes from Limited Run Games, so I just mentioned. Now, I've known the guys at Limited Run Games for years. Um, I've met them multiple times. I went to their pop-up shop in North Carolina. Like, you know, I'm on a first-name basis with a lot of guys over there, but I've never tried to work with them in any sort of capacity. It's like... First of all, they don't need me, but also, you know, I don't, what would I do? <laughs> but uh, for some reason, they decided to reach out to me about a very, like, they didn't even reach out to me about Shenmue 3. <laughs> like, so when they had the official, like, collector set, they didn't even reach out to me about that. But this, they reached out to me about, and they're like, hey, man, we got some, we're going to send you a copy of that, uh, this game, and we're going to hook you up with this little press kit. And I'm like, all right. So I thought it'd be cool to show you guys what this press kit is, because I've never received one from Limited Run Games before. So let's take a look inside. And I guess we'll just rip that there. And, uh, oh, there's like one of those red things. Oh, yeah, okay, that's much better. Uh, open it up. And actually, I thought I could open it up. There we go. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I probably should have used the slicer. Anyway, inside we have, we got a couple of random stuff. Okay, we have, okay, that's, that's that. There's a card with my name on it. First is a keychain. just says limited run games. There's a couple of stickers. Uh, there you go, from Limited Run Games. Then, okay, this is when we get into the promotional stuff. This is a series of stickers for uh, Scott Pilgrim uh, versus the World, the game. And that's this is a, basically an advertisement for the collector set that's coming up with this. Uh, the the pre-order is available January 15th, which obviously has long since happened, but it's the pre-orders are still open as far as I know. So you can check that out. But uh, very cool. So it's, it's going to sh just shows all the stuff it's got. And then there's a card here with my name on it. It says limited run exclusive. Uh, and let's open that up. Inside there's, oh, there's various guitar picks. It's a Scott Pilgrim. Uh, and then there's a card. And the card says, okay, I'll, I'll read this out loud. 
Dear Adam, we're honored to be producing a physical version of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the game, complete edition. Pre-orders for physical editions of the game will end on February 28th, uh, but in the meantime, we thought we'd send you some Scott Pilgrim-themed goodies to celebrate. Thank you for being a part of this exciting game launch. Sincerely, the Limited Run Games team. So, pre-orders are still open today, <laughs> at the time you're watching this, so go check it out. Um, but yeah, very, very cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... The cool, if you don't know anything about the history of this game, I do not blame you, but it is kind of, it is a, this is something that Limited Run definitely deserves props for. Um, so the history of that particular game is that it was originally created by Ubisoft and it was released uh, digitally on the Xbox 360 and the PS3, I want to say in like 2009, I could be wrong about that, but I think it was around then. Um, anyway, the game was pulled from servers. It became one of those examples of games that's like a warning. If you're into digital games, keep in mind they're not really property. They're a license agreement, and that can be taken away from you at any time. Meaning the game can't be re-downloaded, can't be repurchased, all that stuff. Um, but uh, there's, it's, it just became one of those infamous ones where people were actually trying to obtain it by <clears throat> other means uh, to be able to play it. But, uh, you know, Ubisoft, obviously, limited run, they got together and they cut up a deal. I know this is the first time Ubisoft's ever done a, a limited run games release. And this is a pretty good one to start with. Um, because this is just kind of symbolic of like, hey, we care, you know, we're going to be involved in the community and we're going to take some of our more obscure games. But instead of re-releasing it physically for like the Xbox 360 or PS3, it's coming to the Switch. It doesn't mention any other platform. Oh, no, it says also available on PS4, which I guess makes sense. There, I guess, won't be an Xbox One version of this, or at least not physically. But, um, yeah, so that'll be a thing. You can go pre-order that now. Um, I think that that's very neat. Um, because I like the, obviously I'm very much into physical media. I mean, I did buy Iron Soldier for the new one, or Iron Soldier 3. But, you know, I, I like the idea that if Ubisoft is saying, because Ubisoft is obviously a huge company. You know, they don't just make Watch Dogs Legion and stuff like that. They make, like, lots of things, and they have throughout their history. So I like the idea that if they're like, look, we have some obscure games that we don't really want to deal with as a major publisher, but if we want to let someone like Limited Run handle that and just put out a limited release of it, I kind of like that concept. Like, this is just an obscure example. Not the best game ever produced, certainly, but it's an interesting one. Um, has anybody ever out there heard of, particularly in PAL regions, a game called Street Racer? It was a, I think it was a PAL-only exclusive. It was on the Sega Saturn uh, exclusively in Europe. I don't know if it ever got a PS1 release, but I also know it's the only time Ubisoft made a game for the Sega Genesis or the Mega Drive. And a game like that, Ubisoft is never, ever going to re-release that. But wouldn't it be cool if someone like Limited Run was able to be like, you know what, we'll do it. We'll, we'll you know, upgrade that and re-release it, give you the original mode, a new mode. But wouldn't it be cool if that's the kind of road this type of stuff goes down? I think that this was an incredibly good starting point because obviously this particular game is very infamous for that history. So... I know I'm kind of rambling on here, but I just, I'm very proud of the fact that this got made. I think that that's, it can't be undersold, like, how significant it is that they would do this. That's all I'm saying, because you are taking one of the most definitive examples of a game that was essentially stolen digitally. You know, it was removed and never to be seen again, and saying, no, not only are we not doing that, we're giving it a physical upgraded edition, everyone's going to have access to it, and we're going to have, like, we're going to just go baller here. We're going to have, like, all this crazy stuff that goes with it. This deserves to be supported for that reason alone, and hopefully it leads to more good stuff. So thank you very much to Limited Run, uh, not only for this stuff, and I, I know they're sending me the, the actual set at some point, but not only for doing that, but also just, you know, the concept. I like the idea that they can do more stuff like that, because I'm all about taking these obscure titles and just giving them another chance. Anywho, thank you very much. Moving on, we got a couple others here. This one is from Retro Fighters, and I have no idea what this is. Uh, Retro Fighters is a company that makes, like, um, updated controllers for retro consoles. I've done videos on some of their stuff. Like, actually, it was last month. I showed these, like, four uh, wireless N64 brawler controllers they just randomly sent me. Um, I was a little surprised to find this in my mailbox. It was just another package from them. I don't know what this is, so let's go ahead and find out. It is, what is this? Retro 85 NES cartridge game cases. Includes eight individual game cases plus hard carrying case. I don't know what this is. Um, NES, oh, it's for, for with the Nintendo Switch. Okay, I know what this is. 
I've seen this popping up on various people's Instagrams and stuff like that. And I was just like, okay. Um, what this is, is, okay, it's, a, it's a, if you have loose Switch games, uh, the little cards, um, you can keep them in carrying cases, right? Uh, and there's a ton of those. This one is not only a carrying case, but it has individual case protectors for each of the games that makes it look like an NES game or like a miniature NES game. Probably would look really good if you had like um, an NES classic to go with it. But uh, let's take a look. These look kind of cool. So there's, there's the main case. Open it up here. And yeah, so that's your carrying case, but inside individual little plastic things. And you just, yeah, it looks like you just insert the Switch game in there. Sorry, I don't have an open Switch game to show you, but you just put them in there. And on the back, it even has like an NES cartridge sticker. Do not store in extreme temperatures. Do not immerse in water. Do not clean with benzene, thinner, alcohol, or other such solvents. This is really cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll uh, I'll take a I'll show you guys footage of what it looks like with an actual Switch game in it. But I think that's really neat. Wasn't expecting that at all. So yeah, if you uh, I guess if you're if you, this is not bad. If you're like into Switch stuff. I can see this being a really cool way to host your games because you're basically getting two cases. You put it in here for just the visual thing. You could even, you know, if you really wanted to, you could keep it up as a display piece. But after you're done with it at that point, you know, you can put them back in this case and this can be your travel case. So you're getting dual protection. So, yeah, I had no idea this... I mean, I, I knew this was a thing only because I saw it on other, you know, YouTubers and stuff they had um, on their Instagrams. But I had no idea that I was getting one. Um, and then it's got little instructions on what you do with that, so... Yeah, that's really cool. So thank you very much to Retro Fighters. I was not expecting this at all. Thank you. Um, and last but not least, we got another package. This comes from Pixel Heart. Um, Pixel Heart is a French-based indie publisher uh, and developer um, that mostly focuses now on Nintendo Switch stuff. I think they've done some PS4, though I'm not sure about that. Uh, they even did a couple of um, Wii U titles. I did videos on the... Uh, Finding Teddy Part 2 and the Shoot'em Up Collection, which were almost the last two Wii U uh, physical editions ever released. The only one that came after it was Shakedown Hawaii. They also do Dreamcast stuff, although they have nothing to do with Xenocider. So I don't know what this is, to be totally honest with you. They just messaged me at some point and said, we're sending you something. So this might be a new Dreamcast game. I truly don't know, <laughs> but or maybe it's like some Switch game, maybe you know, something like that. I, I don't know. So let's let's open it up and find out. Uh, okay. This time I'll use this thing. Okay. Okay. And is that okay? All right. Okay. Let's do this. Open it up. It's a card. It says. Uh, dear Adam Korolik, the whole Pixel Heart team uh, wishes you a happy New Year, 2021. Uh, to thank you for your support since our meeting, we offer you a limited edition and unavailable with the purchase of Battle Crust. Okay. Um, uh, Battle Crust was a Dreamcast game that I did a video on a while back, but uh, let's see here. There's... Ooh! Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Right. Battle Crust. <laughs> so, yes, yes, I remember what this is now. Battlecrust was a, um, yeah, it was a Dreamcast game. I did a video on it a few years ago. It's a shoot 'em up um, They did, uh, you know, they had the North American style version. And then there was this, there's the PAL edition, which is what this is. Now, this is purely cosmetic. Uh, the, the art, just because it looks PAL doesn't mean it's like PAL region coded. It just looks that way. Uh, but the limited edition here was very uncommon. Um, they only did, I don't remember offhand, I want to say, and I could definitely be wrong about this, I want to say they only did 50 of these. But the big deal about this, other than the fact that it's just the limited edition, is that it even says it on the back, the OST CD version included. Um, the only way you could get the soundtrack for this game was in this particular release. They didn't put it in any of the other versions. Um, and it looks like it has come out, which is not surprising, these PAL cases are <laughs> not the best design. But, and that's, I guess, Sega's fault. But these, yeah, that's, sorry, I just, I wasn't expecting this at all. Um, I didn't know what to expect, but I certainly wasn't expecting this. So that was very cool. They gave me a handwritten note on a cool little card they made, um, as well as this, like, uber rare version of one of the Dreamcast indie games with the OST. Now I have a bit of a crisis, because I don't usually keep stuff sealed, but I know that this is an incredibly uncommon title. Um, but it does have the OST, and I would love to listen to it. Wow. Sorry, I know I'm a little... I'm suddenly out of words, but it's just like I wasn't expecting that at all. This is a really cool indie Dreamcast release. Um, 
So thank you very much to the guys over at Pixel Art. Um, check them out. You know, like I said, they do cool stuff. I'll put a link in the description. They've got various Dreamcast games they made, uh, the Wii U games that I don't know if they're still available or not. Um, but uh, they do some their own Switch stuff and PS4. Again, I think they do PS4 stuff. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. I was not expecting that at all. So, kind of, yeah, a little speechless there. But uh, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. If you could like, comment, subscribe, I would appreciate that. Check the social media stuff in the description. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. That way, if you want a new on game, you'll get the news right away. Uh, or any some such thing. Um, so I do want to thank, though, that uh, all these guys. I want to thank um, uh, Pixel Heart for hooking me up with this. That was very cool of you guys. Uh, thank you to Retro Fighters for the Switch cases. Well, again, really wasn't expecting that. Thank you to Limited Run Games for the, the set, the promo items. Please go ahead and check them out um, on, you know, like, again, today is the day the pre-order is closed. So this is like the last chance to get this ever. So do it uh, if you're interested. Thank you to uh, Songbird Productions for the spare copy of that. Um, I guess... You know, uh, thank you to Ubisoft for hooking me up with this. Thank you to Retro Summers for hooking me up with the extra copy of this. Thank you to Best Buy <laughs> so much for all you've done to not only hurt my wallet, but to save it at the same time. It's like it's like the, the hero that's, it's like Batman coming in, he saves you from the fire, and then he punches you for having gone in the fire in the first place. That's, that's how you are to me, Best Buy. That's how you make me feel right now. Either way, thank you very much. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.